everybody. Marissa, over to you. Wonderful. Thank you for that uh, beautiful lead-in. What a great way to begin. Um, so today I want to talk a little bit about contextualizing this practice very quickly. I'm taking my inspiration from something that Jean-Claude teaches, which is the vertical gesture. If you've ever taken a workshop with Jean-Claude, he does a beautiful gesture where the hand and the arm is lifted up and you sort of pull, gosh, I'm sorry for the end, you pull the energy down so that you're sort of pulling past all of the intellectual activity coming more and more rooted into the body. I think that in many ways meditation is a vertical practice. So normally we're very horizontal. We're racing to the future. We're thinking about the past. We're very goal-oriented. This is an opportunity for us to drop into a more vertical experience. So I'd like to just offer that before we begin, that every time you connect with the breath, the breath is allowing you to drop down vertically. So we always begin by coming into the body, into the posture, finding a sense of connection to gravity, whether you're sitting in a chair, sitting on a cushion, finding a posture that feels dignified. So there's an upright quality to it, but it's not rigid or stiff. Letting the hips be relatively even allowing for the natural asymmetry of the body, finding the tailbone, noticing that there's a little spark of energy there, following that energy as it glides up the spine, bringing you into a position that's upright but not uptight, a relaxed yet dignified posture to support your practice. Letting go of the shoulders, Letting the arms be relaxed and natural. Finding a sense of stillness and ease at the hands. Relaxing the jaw. Relaxing the brow. Either closing the eyes or lowering the gaze. Letting the mask drop. That part of you that's always presenting yourself. Letting that fall away. Relaxing all the muscles of the face. Shifting your attention to the breath. Noticing where the breath is happening in the body. The temperature of the air as it rushes in and out of the nostril. Cooler on the inhale. Warmer on the exhale. The rise and fall of the chest and the abdomen as you breathe in and breathe out. The natural rhythm of the breath. Locating the most relaxed part of the breathing process at the nose or the chest or the abdomen. Recognizing that as your home base, the place you'll come back to again and again. Resting there, just following the natural rhythm of the breath. Letting the air nurture you. A powerful force of nature that you're connected to without having to do anything at all. Breathing in with thought. Breathing out with thought. 
Breathing in, breathing out, resting in the breath. Noticing all of the horizontal activity of the mind, the way it fantasizes about the future, the way it roots around in the past. And choosing to connect with the breath as a way of plunging down into a more vertical experience, as if you were dropping a light down into a well to see how deep it goes finding that it just continues and continues with no end in sight. Breathing in with what arises, breathing out with what arises, breathing in, breathing out, resting in the breath. Shifting your attention now to the soundscape wherever you are. Noticing all of the sounds. Letting yourself rest for a moment and just listening. Just being a small part of things with no pressure to do anything at all. Noticing the temperature of the air. Reconnecting with the gravity at your feet, where you've been held this whole time. And closing your practice with a few deep fortifying breaths. Thank you for practicing. Thank you, Marissa, very much. It was beautiful. A gift. I, I wanted to say a few words about ambition. Despite conventional wisdom, ambition isn't all that bad, especially in the beginning of a practice. In fact, ambition is necessary, Trungpa Rinpoche said, to, to jumpstart your practice to fire you up enough to achieve uh, the discipline, to practice every day. So, in a sense, ambition is a spark plug. Just as in the regular material world, you need ambition to achieve, you also need ambition to get practice going. It's an incentive. In the same way that confusion and neurosis are fertilizers. Some poet said, we pitch our tent in a field of dung. I don't remember who it was. I think it was Yeats, but I couldn't find the quote when I Googled it. We pitch our tent in a, tent in a field of dung. You may, with many years of daily practice, turn into somebody without much neurosis or confusion, the opposite of the spiritual materialist, but you don't start out that way. You may turn into somebody with little driving ambition, but you, you don't start out that way. In our daily practices, the goal is to turn lead into gold, not to turn gold into gold. If we were already gold, we couldn't turn ourselves into gold. Mm -hmm. to, and counterproductive to castigate yourself for not being your own image of picture perfect before you even start practicing. Personally, I thrive when I'm spoon-fed the elixir of praise. For example, I confess that I go to healers in the hope that they're going to congratulate me on my good health. <laughs> as, a, as a young person, when, when, when I was threatened by punishment or made to fear a terrible outcome of my actions, I, I never did well. I just stayed tight. 
But when I was a pra- when I was praised for doing something even pretty well, I became ambitious to do better. It seems to me that that's reasonable even on a physical plane. If the fear of God or the fear of punishment is laid into you, or if you're strictly scolded for having done something badly, you become uptight. That, that happens naturally. Your, your body becomes contracted. You might say that you've created or you've turned yourself into a, a negative force field. And sometimes a negative force field, when it's created in childhood, can last a lifetime. But you can't do good work or, or create in a negative, contracted force field. To do good work, you need some spaciousness, some relaxedness, some, some openness to the unknown. So I suggest you don't create a negative force field for yourself, that you be a gentle parent to yourself as a practitioner, a parent who is lavish with praise for whatever's been done well, however small the accomplishment. Oh, and by the way, meditating with a smile is allowed. (laughs) (laughs) So, and praise yourself when you practice. Be lighthearted and forgive yourself when you haven't and simply go back to practicing. 